Item number SCP-5210 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-5210 is to be kept in a standard containment cell. This cell is to have four automated tranquilizer guns loaded with darts containing no less than 10 milliliters of carfentanil, aka elephant tranquilizer. SCP-5210 is to be restrained using a 3-meter chain pinned to the center of the cell. No visual recording devices of any kind are to be allowed inside the containment cell. Any personnel caught attempting to do so will be reprimanded after clearing a psych evaluation. Once every seven days, a Class D personnel who does not suffer from any severe visual impairment must enter the cell alone. The individual will interact with SCP-5210 for 12 hours before being fired on by the automated tranquilizer guns. Four blindfolded personnel will then enter the cell to retrieve the individual. SCP-5210 will make no attempts to escape or to harm these personnel. Personnel, however, may make physical contact with the entity, either through accident or the entity intentionally initiating. Agents should be aware that this poses no threat and should not be alarmed. Description SCP-5210 is an anomalous entity resembling a male golden Labrador, approximately two months old. SCP-5210 does not appear to physically age. SCP-5210 may be immune to traditional physical harm. Although this has not been confirmed, assessing this trait is not advised. See Addendum 5210-2. SCP-5210's primary anomalous trait is a cognito hazard that activates when anyone views it. Those who directly view it will feel an overwhelming urge to pet the anomaly, play with it, call it a good boy and perform various other archetypal tasks traditionally associated with interacting with a puppy. Those affected by SCP-5210 will not cease these activities until they are unable to continue looking at SCP-5210. Natural thinking will create a vague sense of unease, but will not be enough to free an individual from the cognito hazard. See Addendum 5210-2 those who have survived interaction with SCP-5210 describe having at the time believed it, it was their greatest life experience and that no other experience could ever be greater. Viewing SCP-5210 through video, live footage or photographs will cause similar feelings of adoration and will cause the affected individual to express an extreme desire to meet and interact with SCP-5210 in person. Affected individuals will also become aware of SCP-5210's location. These effects will also end when the individual no longer sees SCP-5210's depiction. Should SCP-5210 go more than eight days without direct human interaction, equal to or exceeding 12 consecutive hours, its cognito hazardous ability will affect individuals even if they cannot visually see the entity. These individuals will instinctively know the location of SCP-5210 and will attempt to reach its location as quickly as possible using any available means of transportation. Range of this cognito hazard rapidly expands. It is not currently known if there are limits to the range, but it has been demonstrated to be able to cover over 40 kilometers. Addendum 5210-1 Recovery Log SCP-5210 was recovered on March 18th, 2018. On March 12th, 2018, the Foundation intercepted satellite images of the town of Beat, Wyoming, revealing that the inhabitants were dead. There were no signs of a struggle of conventional weapon use or any known disease being responsible. A team of field agents was sent to investigate. Agents reported seeing empty homes and empty streets. The doors to homes had been left open and no cars were present on any of the streets. 
After 15 minutes, the agents found a street containing dozens of vehicles parked haphazardly, with several having crashed into each other around an alleyway. Several dead, emaciated bodies were found at the edge of the alleyway, with a large pile found inside the alley itself. It was later confirmed that the entire town population had died here. While examining the bodies, Field Agent Hernandez reported to having heard a whimpering sound coming from beneath the corpses at the end of the alley. After removing several corpses, SCP-5210 was discovered and seen by all agents present. No contact was received for over two days, given that the town of Beep was a two-day drive from the nearest Foundation facility. Response team was delayed. Of the six agents sent, only Field Agent Hernandez returned. He was suffering from the effects of sleep deprivation and dehydration. SCP-5210 had been contained in the back of transport truck. Field Agent Hernandez gave a brief explanation of SCP-5210's primary anomalous effect before passing out and being taken to the site beep medical bay. Addendum 5210-2 Interview Log Interviewed Field Agent Hernandez Interviewer Dr. Bernstein Forward Agent Hernandez has awoken after retrieving SCP-5210 and is undergoing a site evaluation. Begin Log Agent Hernandez fiddles with his IV. I don't understand why this is necessary. It's not uncommon for things like this to happen in the field. You know good and well why it's necessary. We don't fully understand the nature of the anomaly. It could still be affecting you now. It's out of my head now, Doctor. My name is Agent Hernandez. I work for the SCP Foundation. My job is to help the Foundation secure, contain, protect. How's that? You understand why that's not enough. You need to work with me. Help me understand what happened. Like I already said, the thing controls you when you look at it. It makes us all dote on it like a child. That's all there is to it. And what of the other agents? When it made you... Agent Hernandez slams his fists on the table. It didn't make me do that. It's the only thing I did where I was in complete control. Please, just walk me through it. What did it feel like being affected? Are you married? I don't see the relevance of the question. I'm married. Got a two-year-old boy back home with a girl on her way. Well, congratulations, I suppose. But please, stay on topic. I remember when I first saw her in a wedding dress. I thought I would never see anything so beautiful so wonderful ever again. But then we had our son. It was different, but seeing my boy in my wife's arms, I thought nothing could ever compare. And then I saw that thing. Suddenly, my wife and son no better than dirt. They were trash. Nothing could compare to that thing, I thought. Cognito hazards can overrule all logic and emotion. So this anomaly made you see it as desirable, is that it? It was more than that. It's tough to explain. It looked just like a normal puppy. It rolled over, nuzzled, licked our hands, all that stuff. But I could feel something more sometimes. It was like it needed us. Like it desired us as much as we desired it. It was a hunger there. It might be from the blinking. I tried not to blink. I think we all did, but we couldn't stop ourselves. It wasn't enough for us to react or do anything before our eyes opened again, but it let me feel, if only for a moment. And this went on for several days. Tell me, did you feel tired, hungry, or did it remove those feelings? I still felt all of it. I just powered through it. We all did. I honestly didn't know I had it in me. I pushed through the pain, the hunger, all of it. 
The hardest was to smell. The bodies, they were just starting to decompose when we arrived. We were sitting on them, literally sitting on these floating corpses. The fluids, we had sat in them, let them soak in our clothes, into our skin. I wanted to etch, but I didn't. I fought it so I could keep petting that thing. What did break you free? I need details. You claim you were in control of yourself when you apprehended the anomaly. Here's the thing. I'm not allergic to dogs. I don't think I would have made it past a second date with my wife if I couldn't be around dogs. She's obsessed with them, I'm telling you. This is because I honestly don't know what made me sneeze. But I did. I sneezed hard. It kept my eyes closed just long enough for me to get back in control and keep them closed. So there I am, my eyes closed, body aching, this close to passing out, and my teammates are still under its control. So I unholstered my pistol, feel around for the thing, and fire three shots into it. I'm sure I hit it, but it didn't. And that's when I felt it. I don't know how else to say it other than it felt dark. I hear Agent Willem. She's always loved dogs. So maybe this thing hit her harder than the rest of us. She says that I need to open my eyes and look. Her exact words were, Look at him. He's such a good boy. He's the goodest little boy. Next thing I know, the agents were grabbing at my face. They're clawing at my face, trying to force my eyes open. I tried to fight him off, Doctor. I swear I did. But I was so tired. I didn't have the energy. I couldn't fight. So I just started shooting. I emptied the clip just to be sure. Once it was just me and the thing. Continuing it was just a matter of dragging it and feeling it around until I found the transport vehicle. It didn't really put up any resistance. I guess it got what it wanted. I see. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you are ready to return to active duty, but higher-ups might want you to do a few more of these. End Law Note On May 23rd, 2018, Agent Hernandez was determined to be mentally unfit for duty after he was arrested by local authorities for having killed his family dogs as well as his neighbors.